What's up guys, Albert Quartz from here to Financial Happiness by Jonathan Clements. Um, Clements plans to teach us how to enrich our life by teaching us good financial skills and to show us the best way to handle our money. Um, Clements addresses many of life's crucial financial times and major financial aspects and teaches us how to plan for them and be ready to address them in every possible way. In terms of the book style, the book consists of 77 unique chapters, each which contain a different lesson about financial happiness. Each chapter spans over the course of a day, and something that I found interesting about this book is the way that it's very conversational and interactive. So the reader has a lot of spots to take notes and kind of like write down what they're thinking as they read the book. Because the book is written in this manner, it makes it very easy to appeal to a wide array of different audience group from like high schoolers all the way to seniors that are retired. One strength of the book is the readability of the book itself. Because each chapter is relatively short, it doesn't flood the reader with too much information to remember and allows time to reflect. In addition to this reflective topic, the author also adds a quote at the end of each book, which gives the reader something to think about. For example, in chapter 29, he says, don't have a will, you won't live to regret it, but your family almost certainly will. Some weaknesses of the book were that he seemed to have little emphasis on certain topics compared to others. I felt that although a major point of the book was to keep it concise and relatable, there were certain parts where he should have emphasized a little more. Another thing was that the chapters felt a little disjointed aside from the instances where he referred back to the exercises in the past chapters. In day 77, the last day, which was the last chapter, we are asked to simply make a list of our accomplishments that we have had throughout our lives and going forward in the future. This enables us to seize control of our own financial life, which will ultimately unlock freedom for our future. Day 13 teaches controlling what you can. This chapter highlighted the difference between smart and bad moves versus good and bad luck. For example, buying a stock before it crashes is more of bad luck than a bad move. What we're responsible for is controlling what we can and making sure we're prepared for these different bad lucks that we occur over our financial lives. One idea that Clemens talked about was to follow financial examples of those closest. I feel like this is a flawed idea because those experiences may have led them to experience financial difficulty, whether it was an immediate effect or one that was drawn out for some years. Most family members will have sound financial experience, but not everyone was in the same situation or had the same resources as others. A key aspect of this book are the activities that are provided. Clements arranges these personal reflection activities so that readers are actually likely to do them because they're clear and only take about two to three minutes per. These activities consistently build on top of one another as you read through and provide valuable insight on your future. One interesting activity that the book has to offer is determining your own net worth. The book includes a chart where you can input what you own and its value as well as what you owe and its values. Once that's done, just take the value of your assets and subtract your debts and that total is your net worth. One idea synonymous with what we've learned in class is chapter four on embracing humility. This chapter raises awareness to having too much confidence being not optimal when managing money. This is the same as the investor behavior from our own class, where we learned that overconfidence leads to trading more, earning less, under diversifying, and making markets more volatile. All things that are the same as what Clement taught us in this lesson. Clements wanted to stress how important it is to start saving at a younger age. He made readers list out their monthly expenses to see where their money would go to every month. He went on to mention how people box themselves in with these costs, having no financial wiggle to save. Clement said spending can give short-time thrill, but this can lead to excessive financial stress. He wanted readers to care more about the future when they're younger, because of how many years are ahead of them. In day 66, an idea that was flawed that I found while reading was that stocks have fundamental value. We already know that stocks and their numbers can shrink. We don't need to know that behind these stocks, real businesses exist because this is prior knowledge that we have while researching the businesses we want to invest in. One flaw I would say about this book is that it isn't very inspiring. The book doesn't really tell you what happens if you make these changes or what the payoff may resemble for those who follow these methods. After reading the last chapters of this 77-day journey that we go on to enrich our financial lives, 
It is safe to say that this book is very good and I will definitely recommend it to other UC Davis students. So my question is, it's time to take charge of your life and what are you waiting for?